Welcome to another Nature Discovery screencast. Look over my shoulder and watch as I look for the pure beauty found in nature from the raw videos taken on one of my most recent photo walks. The photo walks took place in several locations around Cabarrus County, North Carolina, and that is in the United States. Today we are using Final Cut Pro X on a Mac, and we will be screening this raw video footage as our preliminary video production workflow. You can also watch our 30 Seconds of Nature screencast where we take selected raw footage and turn it into 30 seconds or longer videos to be used on Nature's Wild Things website where we are building a visual nature field guide to life. take a look at what we have here today. These are videos and photographs from the last week's worth of photo walks. As the weather is getting nicer here, more and more critters are being found on the photo walks. And uh, these are some of the highlights from the photo walks. And we're going to start off here today with our slowest critters. <laughs> I think these guys move at a different speed and it isn't fast. I Last week I had uh, found uh, that water scorpion and uh, about the same location as I found that water scorpion. I found this in the water and I, I just didn't know what it was. I could see it was moving around and uh, I think I've decided it's a little floating or kind of sunk stick with a snail doing acrobatics here. <laughs> the stick is moving as the snail is working its way around. There's little bugs crawling around on the stick. I don't know what kind of bugs they are. They're underwater there. And this snail just seems to be <laughs> having a a fun old time there. These two snails are just working the algae I believe uh, at the near the surface there and uh, they're just uh, eating away I think. One had just gotten done crawling over top of the shell of the other. And uh, this guy's kind of upside down with his uh, kind of belly side there facing up. He grabs a hold of this little stick. You can see the snail rather nicely. You can see his uh, shell there. And the way he kind of wraps himself right around the, uh, the stick as he's crawling out through. And that shell is just sort of bobbling in the... Uh, in the water there. But that was interesting. This is how I see most of the snails just uh, walking along the bottom doing what they do with the algae looking uh, looking around and eating I guess. Now this video I had no idea what was going on here. I could tell there were snails there and it was a very cool morning here and uh, I just didn't know what was going on. There was a always see the snails one or two at a time on, on, in the pond but this is a group of maybe uh, 20, 30 snails all kind of uh, around the same thing here and I just didn't know what was going on. If we play it a little faster speed you can uh, it didn't work. Let's try it a little faster speed. Here we go. And we speeded it up about four times. Um, just several things going on here. I, and I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I don't know exactly what kind of snails these are. 
Um, you see the snails themselves and they all seem to be crawling over each other. And one of the things I observed here is little uh, algae or hair-like things that are growing there. I'm assuming they're plants, but what I don't understand is why they're dancing. Are the snails producing currents that have the algae? Here you can see it too. I just don't understand. Are those plants dancing? Here you can see one right down in here too. I'm not understanding a lot here. It is coming, becoming obvious though as we watch this clip maybe why they're there. An earthworm has wandered into the pond and has been pounced upon by all these little snails. And uh, reading up on snails they will uh, uh, work on the uh, earthworm as well as the algae and the other stuff in the uh, pond uh, as food. So uh, a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Now last week I promised that we'd look a little bit at uh, emerging, emerging dragonflies and the whole process. And here we have a photo of a uh, well, let's see what kind. Of, I think it's an eastern pond hawk. But in this stage, the coloration is so different and unique. I'm not sure, but looking at it, it looks like it may be a female eastern pond hawk. But then I'm no expert here, so I'm only guessing at that. And when I found uh, this little guy, I quick snap a picture or two, and then I start with the video and I was trying to set up the camera so that I could uh, have it uh, stable and and uh, level you might say here um, so that I could do some time-elapse photography so I was uh, just snapping away taking a couple pictures of this little creature coming out of the ectoskeleton which had just crawled up on this little branch sticking out of the water here and uh, we'll uh, uh, show you a little bit of the video here then as he emerged from the uh, upside down position here as I was just setting up the tripod he um, or she uh, popped out you might say and then clung on to the ectoskeleton that uh, she had just crawled out of. And I'm setting up the camera yet and still getting it in uh, in uh, a good uh, frame here and a better composition and uh, just in real time I couldn't really see what was going on too much here but I knew it's time to uh, make sure everything is as good a focus as I can get and framed as good as I can get and then literally walk away and let the camera do its work. So let's take, this is a very long clip. I'm going to speed this up about four times here and let's watch. Um, you can literally see uh, just a little bit of movement out of this creature, but you can literally see the wings being pumped up. I believe there's fluid in their body and these uh, beautiful little creatures will actually start pumping that fluid into the wings and the wings expand and grow. And we can look exactly uh, when we're done here at uh, the, the times involved. This is time elapsed photography here now. Um, you can see some of the other bugs kind of crawling around and moving in the background here. And uh, the wings are just literally growing right out of his back. Now, over the course of uh, a couple hours, I believe these wings harden and then they can fly. So, from 
a creature that lives in the water to a uh, flying dragonfly is a matter of a couple hour process and uh, you can see how big the wings have gotten. Lost a little bit of focus on his head there, but it's almost to the point it's focused better on the wings. And uh, I think uh, the wings are just about reaching the size here. So let's stop and just look here. I'm at 14 minutes, so the whole process took almost 15 15 minutes here from beginning to end where we have just the uh, crumpled up small little stubs of wings and then uh, grow 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 just amazing I thought that was uh, very interesting completely change around from the camera pointing into the water to the camera above a stream over the water there's a horizontal branch here and our friends the woolly alder aphids and uh, some of their babies all lined up here um, and the ever <laughs> attendant ants who are uh, taking advantage of the honeydew that these little aphids produce and they're tending the flock you might say and in this case the woolly aphids uh, they look like it's a flock <laughs> it's, uh, it looks like it could be a sheep in disguise there now right on a branch next to it is another group of aphids and here you can see that the little ones are kind of wandering around yep uh, they had babies over the last week or so and you can see the, the kids all sort of running amok here in fact we can uh, speed that up a little bit and uh, watch the ant tending the flock and uh, the little ones just kind of running around Now, at one point here, let's go to scrubbing control where I can kind of control what we're looking at. Another ant comes up to the one that's tending the flock, and he ever so gently kind of taps him on the back with his uh, antenna. He does that a couple times and then just goes away again. I don't know what that was about. Now in another tree near near the, the pond in the water here I found uh, this little guy and uh, I actually have quite a bit of video of this little guy and he's taking from the uh, Y in the tree that's kind of filled with sawdust he's taking one little piece of sawdust at a time and he's picking it up and he's going out over the edge and dropping the sawdust onto the ground. I don't know how long he's been working at this. I'm not sure why he's doing it. <laughs> but he seems to be very diligently doing it. I, I don't know enough about what's going on there. And uh, I found it interesting. I'll turn around and see the uh, grassy field here and we find uh, this green striped grasshopper there may be a, a better species name for this guy I don't know much about my grasshoppers other than uh, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of them and I get confused trying to figure out which which guy is which but this guy uh, is deciding, I think, here we'll speed it up a little bit. He's deciding he's hungry, so he's going to devour some of the local vegetation around him. Now, I, 
guess you could take about a thousand of these and throw them in your backyard and take care of all your grass problems but uh, I just don't think the neighbors would uh, would would appreciate that <laughs> let's take a look here now this is a very small little spider I'm not quite sure the way the the sun has them a little bit overexposed I'm not quite sure what kind of spider this is but what I found interesting was he was very efficiently and diligently weaving his web here you can see the very center of the web where all the spokes to the web going outward are connected he's weaved just maybe five six seven strands right around the center there and uh, just working his way around Let's uh, just uh, look at some of this in slower motion here. Um, so first things is he's walking the web. So these little spiders are capable of grasping their own web, which is sticky. So these little graspers at the end of their f legs and feet, I guess, are capable of grasping around I guess these little uh, webs and not stick to them and they are capable of taking all their little legs and grasping these webs around them and walk around on their own webs just things you never think about when you look at spider webs and here he's you can see the process the the web comes out of the the hindquarters you might say and he he uses his leg to attach it or position it just the way place he wants it to one of the spoke webs and uh, moves on to the next one pulling that little thread behind him grabbing it with that leg and connecting it just where he wants it. <laughs> it's almost like he's um, tensioning it. He's, he's making it just the tension he wants with that, uh, with that hind leg right there. Just the tension. <laughs> and off he goes. We're looking at the underside here. And uh, just working his way around, working his way around. This is also over the stream, not too far from where those woolly aphids are. And uh, he kind of gets close to the center. He never really completes it out any more than this. And then he proceeds to just uh, sit there and enjoy the sun, waiting for a little creature to fly into his web. All right, let's take a look at uh, what'll be a bunch of different kinds of butterflies here today. Uh, we've got our um, silver spotted skipper around. They seem to be uh, uh, almost everywhere. Chubby little guys. <laughs> They've got fat little bodies on them. The fattest bodies I've seen on butterflies. They look kind of like they're... Uh, little linebackers or something they've they've got a fat little body on them and uh, then we have a beautiful little skipper here um, these are Zebulon skippers this is a male and he's just sitting pretty on the top of the leaf taking in a little of the sun now this is uh, also the time of year when I see odd shaped butterflies flying by me and uh, these butterflies fly weird and they're weird shaped and as they're moving by it's like something weird here and and until you realize when they stop ah, there's two butterflies there and they're in the process of mating and 
These two, the observation was when they were flying by, it looked like one was doing all the flying and the other one was just kind of hanging on. And uh, they landed over here on this uh, uh, grass here. And uh, from, from this angle, I could get a pretty good shot of what they were up to. These are um, Carolina Sitars. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, they're a very frequently seen uh, uh, butterfly in the uh, pasture. The pasture I found these guys in is located right beside a creek. And uh, I'll be visiting that pasture quite a bit this summer and uh, figuring out what's uh, populating the pasture a little bit and bringing, bringing you more and more videos of that. And over in the creek in the pond area here again, I uh, have this uh, abundance right now of the uh, damselflies. And uh, as you can see, there's also an abundance of something swimming around in the water there. <laughs> Small little things. There's some little bugs at the bottom or little, little nymphs of uh, additional dragonflies. And uh, it looks like we also have uh, tadpoles in the pond. I've never quite found the tadpoles before. Interesting colorations on this little guy. And he kind of swims off, makes a hard right, and away he goes. Now, some uh, of the other butterflies we saw in the couple photo walks here. You know, the question mark butterfly, I believe this one is. Just uh, doing what these question marks seem to do. They find a little place in the sun on the leaf litter and they just kind of open and close. Never understood quite what they're doing, but this butterfly have, has these habits. <laughs> and then uh, uh, the next butterfly here is the American Lady Butterfly. Love the underwings on these butterflies. Uh, let's take a look. He wasn't sticking around for long. Not quite sure whether there's some egg laying going on there or not. Just turned around and uh, took off. When you look at these butterflies, initial impression from their face and their little snout there is the, <laughs> the initial impression I have is these are a proud butterfly, <laughs> the proud looking butterflies. Now, uh, flying by me uh, it was a black uh, blob and um, what is this thing? and. Uh, chasing it down a little bit on some of the beautiful wildflowers growing here. I wish I could have uh, taken more video of this beautiful little butterfly. This is a pine vine, it's not pine, it's pipe, pipe vine, shallow tail, swallow tail. Okay, it belongs to the swallow tails and Parnassians? I can't pronounce these things, but uh, it belongs to that family. Just beautiful black butterfly with white dots, and you think it's just black and white, but when you look at the underside of the wings and just giving us a glimpse here, you, you notice there's more than black and white going on here. And uh, Let's take a look around, have a couple videos, and uh, here we can see the underside a little bit. And uh, let's go some frame at a time motion here. You can see the orange spots, white dots, uh, white dots, almost looks like there's white dots either between his eyes or on his eyes, and there's white dots covering uh, his whole body there. You can see the uh, on the lower wing, the little tail that makes him a swallowtail there. 
Beautiful little butterfly. Now, you've just watched about a second's worth of video. <laughs> That's about all I have of this beautiful little creature. Uh, about a second's worth. It goes by pretty quick. Well, that wraps up our photo walk around the pond, the creek, and the meadow. And I believe we have another nature discovery screencast in the can. <laughs>